They're singing about three boys who died. I just don't think you understand. The campaign began online, but now it's being routinely chanted on the streets. They believe that a shocking crime has been covered up. Some say the story you're about to hear is a manifestation of how the far right weaves facts, potentially genuine grievances and conspiracy to foment unrest. Josh, Josh, Harry. Others disagree. What happened or is believed to have happened is one of the main causes of the UK's Yellow Vest movement. Last year, three teenage boys were hit by a car here in West London. The driver, Janesh Chudasama, was a local Asian man who'd been drinking that afternoon. What happened here that night was truly horrific. Mr Chudasama was driving along this road in this direction. According to court documents, he was speeding at 71 miles an hour when he overtook another car, swung back in, clipped the curb and went on to lose control and plough into the three boys as they walked along here. The impact was so severe that one of them, Josh, was flung up and over the fence and landed in the cemetery. The only small mercy in all of this was the pathologist report that said two of the boys, George and Josh, died instantly and Harry, the other boy, almost instantly. Chudasama later pleaded guilty to causing death by dangerous driving and was jailed for 13 years. But the decision by the Court of Appeal to cut that sentence to 10 years outraged the grieving families. That added fuel to the existing belief that, in fact, the incident had been deliberate, perhaps even an act of terrorism. One person who believes it was deliberate is Tracy Blackwell, the mother of Josh, who was killed by Janesh Chudasama. The BBC told the British public that the car lost control, mounted the pavement and killed the boys. It never lost control. You can see it on the CCTV and you can see it on the collision pool. Tracy Blackwell is one of a number of the boys' relatives who have complained of poor treatment by the police from the start and unanswered questions. Their campaign has won sympathisers in certain quarters online. No matter what you think of this case, it's clear. Not least the founder of the English Defence League, Tommy Robinson, real name Stephen Yaxley Lennon. I can't be 100% certain that this was a terrorist attack, but I certainly don't blame the families for coming to the conclusions they have. Up and down the country, amongst the yellow vests, we found people who believe that Chudasama could be an Islamist terrorist. He's from a Hindu family. Listen to me carefully. I he am. was not Hindu. Right. If he was a convert, Right. And, Islam? You, and you believe that or you know that? I know Islam. <laughs> the appalling events in Hayes are part of a wider campaign of grievances by these people in high vis jackets. Most prominent is Brexit. Small groups have been donning yellow vests on a weekly basis in towns and cities across the nation, aiming to capitalise on the symbolism and success of France's far larger Gilets jaunes. And we've been abused and put down by the establishment and calling us racist bigots. This was London. And this Leeds, where anger about Brexit has brought people out onto the streets. It's a protest vote against the, for the people that voted to leave the EU and we feel that we're being betrayed particularly by our local politicians who are not doing what we've, they've represented to do, which is follow up what we've asked. And is the yellow vest something that you feel that you can kind of get behind? Has it, has it inspired you? Yeah, I, I grabbed one off my missus today, that's it. 52% of the country voted to be out of this EU and we're getting mugged off with it. So we want to stand the ground and say, we voted for the one thing, and we want we want what we voted for. And you're not, you're not wearing a yellow vest? No, I'm not wearing a yellow vest. I couldn't get one to fit me. But <laughs> These yellow vest protesters are united in anger against the establishment. As well as Brexit and the campaign about the boys who died, they march about the injustices of homelessness, forced adoptions and much more. For many, these issues are the extent of their grievances. But there are others who are part of something potentially much more significant, the far right finally getting its act together. 
historically far-right movements have not been able to get along. There are so many specific fractures in their ideology that they can't really galvanise as a group. And it's what's kept the UK, I think, mostly safe from far-right extremism. What the Yellow Vest has done is seem to give them some kind of public image to unite behind. And I think behind the scenes in the broader far-right ecosystem, there's a level of organisation now that probably hasn't been present before. Take another look at what else is being said and done at the rallies we've just shown you. Us, London. Right? We are the people. This is our country. Bring back the Magna Carta. We don't want EU rules. We don't want George Soros. We don't want the Rough Brothers. We don't want none of them. We're not far right. We're just right. And this, the one in Leeds. Where some demonstrators unfurled a flag that's linked to neo-Nazi groups. It's been claimed the far right is whipping up Brexit anger for its own ends. Demos like this can use up valuable police resources. This from the former head of counter-terrorism at the Met. The far right have been quite late to, to grasp that actually there's tremendous opportunity to cause chaos and mayhem by being peripatetic, a bit, by popping up all over the place. What we're seeing with the yellow vests is some of that happening, some of the old anarchist far left, hard left tactics being used, if you like, by the new yellow vest uh, right wing activists. We're not just one group or, or one certain party. We've got DFLA members here, we've got Far Britain members here, we've got UKIP supporters and members here, we've got Britain First members here, and we've got a couple of EDL members here. Often the numbers taking to the streets are small, but what's going on reverberates much more widely online. This video by a man called John Lawrence has been viewed 180,000 times. We also spotted this online from Mr Lawrence. The parents and other members of the community are going to be holding a bit of a protest on Friday around 8pm. Gonna... This post led us to a small town in the north of England on a Friday night. In his yellow vest, Mr Lawrence is live streaming a protest outside a local shop. He believes the shop's involved in an alleged attack on three white boys by Asian men. As soon as he got near his mate's house, a white van's pulled up. Two chachas have come out and beat him up. Some view incidents like this as deliberately exploiting local tensions over race. Mr Lawrence often makes clear on social media he isn't racist or anti-Muslim. He talks of waking up the nation about what's happening. Our team wanted to know what was happening here. Um, we're not protesting anything. Oh, right, so what is... I, I don't really want to talk to BBC, honestly. Fake news, honestly. Just be best off clearing off because none of us want to talk to you. So, BBC on the scene, uh, guys. See that? Um, asking questions. And they can fuck right off. B biggest fake news going. They've obviously seen this on social media. We had. And this is what some of those following Mr Lawrence's live stream had to say. It's pretty sinister. Post talk of smashing the place up and making England English again. Amplifying the effect of what might otherwise be an ugly but isolated incident. So here we are, John Lawrence. Thank you, guys, thank you. John Lawrence is a member of Britain First. My dad, West Indian. The street movement is considered far right by some of those who work in counter-terrorism. The man who murdered the MP, Joe Cox, shouted out Britain First as he attacked her. Mr Lawrence said this as our team left the protest. No, I can't, I want to smash him up. Da, 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 da. Hey, goodbye, goodbye, fucking wankers, da, 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 honestly. You're not welcome. Da, da, da. The shop denies any involvement in the alleged assaults. Newsnight understands the situation is now resolved. I'm looking at some donations to get me some funding for a couple of tickets down London. John Lawrence is an example of what some have called a PayPal patriot. Asking for donations is pretty common in a world where rallies, protests and much else are live streamed. Right, here's Anne Subri. So why are you calling for a second vote? James Goddard is a high-profile yellow vest protester who's often communicating on social media. He's on bail for his part in what happened outside Parliament to the MP Anna Subri, amongst others. Traitor to the British people. You might as well start doing your Hitler salute now, you Nazi. This may have caused mainstream revulsion, 
but online, high-profile and controversial interactions get more views from followers. So I don't like asking for money. I have a, a donor box set up on my Twitter page. We need to carry on hitting the streets. Number one, I'm unemployable at the moment. Number two, I have been... No, I'm unemployable, why? why? Unemployable, why? Because well, we know, we know. Really but listen, listen. Because you call someone a Nazi. Because I called someone a Nazi. This was before this, anyway. So my problem... My, so everybody that wants to support my work, I don't beg for it. People ask me and say, can we support you in any way? So, of course, I'm going to accept it. We've got people... What are you like, spending it on? You get paid none of your business. I have to raise money at the moment because I've got legal fees to fund. No one's paying my legal fees, are they? So now I've got to now, because of uh, because of the persecution, it is persecution by the British. My mum has now got panic alarms fitted in her house. My stepdad has had to give his guns away. He's had to sign them over because they were threatening to revoke his licence. So my family are now being targeted because I've approached an MP. So, yeah, if people... Do you regret appro approaching them? No, no, why would I? There's a massive double standard in this country. It's huge. So yeah. you're saying this group is not linked to the far right, it's extreme right? They, what, what would you define as far right? Somebody that stands up for their country? We're not far right. I mean, there's, no, no, right there's nobody that's got right. any far right, right links right. here. I'm not far right. I vote Tory. So how am I far right? Just to say, I've always been proud to be British. James Goddard regularly shares platforms with Tracy Blackwell as she talks about the crash that killed her son and his friends. The belief the truth was covered up fuels the yellow vest protests. This is what Mr Goddard told us about it. It has all the hallmarks, for me, in my personal opinion, of a terror attack. You look at it, you look, you look at the fact that three boys were brutally mowed down, two were missed. Then we've seen the driver run off, then we've seen the passenger run off, and then we've not seen justice. But how does that have the hallmarks of a terrorist attack? Okay, so, it, so how many cars have been mounting pavements in Europe That's over the past five years? How many? In the absence of independent expertise, ambiguous language can keep theories swirling online and off. In Tommy Robinson's video about the boys' deaths, he couches his words carefully, but it is his floating that something isn't right that travels. If this was a terrorist attack, and if this was a cover-up, we could be looking at so many more terrorist attacks than we ever could have imagined. And that is a worrying thought. We said they lost control at care, but he drove down the path uh, from here to that bridge in a straight line, and he only hit something when, when one of the boys run his bonnet and blocked his view. That's when he ran into the lamppost. Fighting for justice, discussing the three children that were murdered in London, on the 26th of January this year by terrorists. We showed some of the claims made online about the incident to the solicitor who represented Janus Chidasama, the driver of the car. I've seen him on numerous occasions in, in prison and he's constantly telling me to pass messages on to the family of the bereaved. What sorts of things does he want the families of the poor boys who died to know? To know that he didn't do it deliberately that he had drunk too much that afternoon and smoked dope and was driving in a t reckless fashion and, and he wiped out three young boys with their futures, their whole lives ahead of them. Mr Lee does feel that the penalties for drink driving offences should be more severe. I think that the law needs to be changed and I think that when someone is killed by a driver in the condition that Mr Tudor Samuels in, that they should make allowances for aggravating features. And there were three in this case, excessive alcohol, dope, and exceeding the speeding limit, speed limit. So your belief is that the sentencing guidelines are wrong? Yes, in, in, in a case like this. It was not just Janusz Chudasama who fled the scene of the crash. So too did his passenger, but he has not faced any criminal charge. The fact that passenger was Muslim is just one of the elements of this appalling case that have sparked unsubstantiated conspiracies online, shame, shame, shame on you. potentially sowing discord on the streets. Whether we're looking at far-right extremism or Islamist extremism, both of them use conspiracy theories to manipulate the narrative. It's very difficult to combat conspiracy theories. In fact, the, the harder you try to combat conspiracy theories, the, the more resolute people become in their belief of them because the, your attempts to combat them becomes part of the conspiracy. So far, it is their donning of yellow vests that is the most obvious sign of unity among those who may be far right. Any threat is still dwarfed by that of Islamist terrorism. But as Brexit D-Day approaches amidst widespread discontent, 
those who might seek to exploit it sense a rare opportunity. <laughs>